of life and parity. So there is no really exact, let's say, there isn't really a specific way or specific style you should be shaking. I will just shake it hard and just you know, have that very nice vigorous up and down motion to use the eyes to bruise the um, tiny. So just shake it hard. So stop when you see when you see that the glass or the bottle has started to frost on the outside. All right, then open it up. So this is the best part about this bottle because as bartenders we need to use two strainers to get the ice out of the drink. This one has a small opening, so it prevents the bigger chunks of ice from getting into the drink. And all you need is a mesh strainer, and you can just tilt it like this. Get rid of all the small little ice chips that you can possibly see from the mesh, and also some of the um, thyme leaves that would have gotten bruised and broken off from the main stem, which you do not want getting in between your teeth when you're drinking a cocktail. So, we're going to put that aside, and from here, what the recipe calls for is a nice 75 ml of snapple, um, kiwi, and uh, strawberry. And this is to add, further add that fruitiness that you want in this drink so that it's more refreshing. So 75 is all the way to the top, just at the beginning of that hourglass that you can see, just at this curve over here. Pour that in, and this time you actually need a metal straw for this drink. So give it a nice stir incorporate all the ingredients together and then if you can and if you want um, that's why I also have a nice little bottle like this uh, sorry glass like this because it allows me to put my garnish right on top over here and this is actually perfect for you if you're doing like a Netflix kind of like um, marathon or like you know a Lord of the Rings marathon you know and you have well, to drink which is your popcorn and you drink over here and you can have a drink without, you know, the popcorn getting in your way. Or maybe you could do both, have a drink and have a popcorn at the same time. So yeah, <laughs> thanks and let me know what you think. Cheers guys. Thank you Ben, cheers. Um, so the vinegar was like an optional choice. Um, is there a reason why the vinegar is important to this drink? Or is there any alternative that um, we can get from like the Kalabansi vinegar? So the vinegar, uh, it's actually because I am very lazy to squeeze my own juice and not many of us have our little like juice or citrus sweetener at home so that actually cuts out the need to do that but then again of course you know we have the first recipe you know which is the highball variation we have that you know lemon nice lemon peel that came from the lemon if you don't have the vinegar you can always use fresh citrus like lemon calamansi or even lime um, but that means that if you if you do not have any kind of you know juicer or squeezer, uh, you might have to do it by hand. And because of that, sometimes you know if you do it directly into the glass or directly into your mixer of choice, that will affect the amount of yield that you get, and your recipes might be a little bit off balance. So something like this fruit vinegar has been cons is consistent. It's been made to be similar tasting throughout um, their, their range. So it's something that you'll be able to get terms of familiarity of flavor and you always know and be able to expect this in quality because citrus at the same time depending on the seasons that there is throughout the year in Singapore the origin of all these produce come from different locations and different sources in different countries so maybe in January your limes and lemons might be more sour but in you know February it might be a little bit more sweeter or like in um, June, like now, you know, or, or down the road, it might be a little bit too watery or it might be a little bit too dry. So, you know, fresh produce always is affected by seasons and it's also affected by the weather. Um, but for ingredients like the fruit vinegar, it is pretty much most consistent. So that means that it allows you to be able to continue making the same drink at that same consistency and that same flavor for the longest time. Yeah. Cool, thank you. I do have to say, like, it looks very refreshing and, like, Right now it's pretty warm, so I am very jealous about that. I'm gonna get my own ingredients to make it. 
Um, so we have a question on the chat box. So uh, what is a whiskey drink that sounds complicated, but it's actually quite easy to make? Um, is there any like drinks you can share with us? Well, I would say that um, it would probably be the commonly uh, known drink as uh, whiskey sour because a lot of people feel like, you know, when you have something like egg white in a drink, you need to process it and prepare it quite meticulously to get, you know, a certain density of the foam or, you know, that kind of nice little white layer on the top, which is called, caused by the aeration of the egg white. Um, honestly, that is a big misconception because um, if the longer you make it, like maybe it's your first time making it at home, you might feel like, oh, now I have shaken it too much and then the foam is fully like, you know, a fingernail, you know, thick. Whereas maybe if you shake it lesser or you add a little bit more egg white next time, it might be maybe one finger thick, you know. So that drink is something that a lot of um, consumers at home feel like it's hard to make, but maybe with a little bit of practice, I would say less than maybe 10 whiskey sours and you'll probably be able to get you know, a result that you would be satisfied with. Well, thank you. Yeah. Do you have any questions for Ben over here? So